Moving on now, the free market philosophies of Ayn Rand apparently taking hold here in the startup nation. Let's watch. The state of Israel was founded on the principles of socialism. The early kibbutzim that originally settled the land were managed as collectives, and the welfare system was expansive. But as the state grew, capitalist ideals creeped into the ethos, both among politicians and the populace alike. And today, there is a small but vibrant community of young liberals committed to the principles of the free market. There is no so-called economic left and right here in Israel. Both left and right parties are central planners, statists, oriented. Some are more socialists, but some are less socialists. But there is no liberal capitalist party. The Liberty Movement held a conference at the Jaffa port on Wednesday and its organizers touted the growth of the movement in the Holy Land and the potential of some of the country's most advanced industrial sectors. We have one sector, the high-tech, which that could break away from it and uh, manage to achieve a world uh, achievement, a world-renowned achievement. And uh, we like to see in other sectors uh, join the high-tech and not the other way around, uh, pulling the high-tech back into a kind of socialistic uh, uh, swamp that will drown it. Socialism continues to feature prominently in Israeli civil society. The ideology is manifest in national debates ranging from the country's natural gas resources to the affordable housing. But increasingly, these voices of socialism are matched by an equally adamant chorus of capitalists determined to reduce the size and scope of the government in the business of the nation. The liberty movement in Israel may be small, but its strong voices are making waves. I'm Shelby Weiner, I-24 News. On set, we have Boaz Arad, founder of the Israeli Freedom Movement, and Melitza Kostik, member of the Students for Liberty. Thank you both very much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Melitza, thank you for joining us. Please tell us what are your thoughts on the conference, and what does a conference of this size tell us about the objectivist movement and how it's catching on worldwide? Of course. The conference was very successful in the terms of event organizing. Uh, I, I really congratulate to our leaders here. Um, I came from Serbia. This is my first time in Israel, and uh, I really enjoyed all the discussions that were present to, uh, at the conference. Um, and of course, uh, uh, I think that we can definitely reach out to more people here. But uh, so far, this is not only an objectivist conference. This is uh, It covers more topics. And I think younger people will uh, even get, get more interested in these kind of ideas. So, so far, it's very, very successful. Well, Boaz, let's bring it here to you. And the Israeli national discourse here, the video that we just saw mentioned the natural gas debate that has been very hot in Israel. And of course, there has been much discussion as well about housing and making it more affordable for the masses. What does this say about the current direction of Israeli politics? Well, since the the public uh, protest in 2011, we see a deterioration in the position of Israel in regard to doing business and the business atmosphere and the relation to uh, to uh, development, investment, and uh, entrepreneurship in Israel. And this is exactly the tendency that we are fearing, and we try. We are building our uh, power in order uh, to stop and to change direction into a freer economy and more protection of individual rights. Well, speaking of that, we have a clip of Ayn Rand discussing her objectivist philosophy. Let's take a quick look. We are now moving towards complete collectivism or socialism, a, a system under which everybody is enslaved to everybody. And we are moving that way only because of our altruist morality. Well, Melitza, let's bring this back to you. Here she's talking about morality being governed by ego, essentially saying that evil is counterintuitively a good thing, while altruism is evil. Why? Tell us about this. Well, I'm not considering myself an objectivist, but I really think Ayn Rand's work uh, is very important for the liberal movement in general. Uh, and uh, I know it's some, sometimes hard to uh, identif identify with her ideas uh, because people like, just um, expect like more gentle words. But uh, her work uh, is definitely the best when it comes to putting an individual in the society position of an individual and why uh, why the 
ego is actually good. And uh, it, when she say, says that altruism is bad, that's not actually the way how usually people perceive it. I see. And Boaz, if she were alive here today, how do you think that she would view the welfare program in Israel? Well, she didn't approve them in uh, the states, and she will not approve them in the in Israel. I mean, and this doesn't mean that we shouldn't help each other or uh, build the welfare or build the insurance uh, plans and so on. But it's mean that you should not force it on people, and you should not confiscate their uh, property in order to support uh, this group or other groups according also to some political tendency or a power structure at the government at the moment. Uh, basically, the fact that we call for more privatization and uh, if we want to privatize the school system, it doesn't mean that we are against education. It's only mean that we want freedom and, uh, and control and responsibility over our own kid, over the programs, over the money we paid and want to be to be well spent. Well, let's talk about Israel's economic growth, for one. A lot of people at the conference mentioned that they believe that if Israel had implemented more free market reforms, that the economy would be growing much faster than 2.5 percent. What are your views, and what reforms need to be implemented? Yeah, well, first of all, 2.5 percent, when 1 percent is the gas, mean that we didn't grow. I mean, so we are in a dire strait right now, and we need to change course. Now, uh, there is one sector that I mentioned over the clip there, which is the high-tech industry in Israel. It's 10 percent of the working force of Israel uh, that bring 50 percent of the of the investment into Israel. And this is something that now is under threat. So basically, instead of uh, cutting the legs of the high-tech industry, we need to make all the other industries the same and bring our uh, innovation into education, into agriculture, into other subjects. So uh, the way to do that is lowering taxes, lowering regulation, open, uh, uh, lowering the barriers for international trade and work. and actually going just the opposite from what we hear from the socialist side of the political arena. Well, thank you both very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.